This is Heather Junkins from NHGRI. Can everybody hear me? Yes, Teji from Duke. Yes, I can hear you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I think it's just about 2 o'clock, and we can go ahead and get started. Um, I hope you've all been able to connect to the um, WebEx online. Right now I have my um, opening slide on there, um, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, my presentation should only be about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up to um, questions from anybody. But this session will be recorded, and it will be archived, and we will post it on the same website where you found all the information for today's webinar so you can go back for reference. So today, pre-application webinar for the new NHGRI postdoc training program in genomic medicine research. with an outline, I'm going to cover a couple things in today's webinar. We'll talk about the aspects um, that make a genomic medicine program unique. I will talk about the various elements of a successful T32 program. I will also provide some application information, and also we'll have a period for questions and answers. So genomic medicine T32, this program will serve to train a new generation of scientists in genomic medicine. Individuals in these programs should receive deep and broad training and experiences in the sciences that underpin genomic medicine. The goal is to develop independent scientists and a new generation of scientists in genomic medicine. The trainee level for this particular program is limited to postdocs only. These include those with a medical degree or a PhD or the equivalent. And we are limiting the program to six trainee slots. NHGRI defines genomic medicine as a new medical discipline that will use genomic information about an individual as part of their clinical care, for example, as the diagnostic or therapeutic decision making. This training, this training program should bridge the gap between genomic science and genomic medicine. There are two tracks for this program, one that focuses on basic research and another that focuses on clinical research. As note, the clinical track should not focus on the specific care of patients. A T32 application may include one or two of these paths. For each track, applicants must clearly describe the goals of the program in a detailed training program that is consistent with the overall goals of the program. Elements of a successful T32 program. Like I said before, the goal is to provide a comprehensive training experience that will enable individuals to conduct research and prepare for a research career. The full program starts with the program director. A multi-PI model is recommended since these programs require careful oversight and can be complex in nature. The PI should have a demonstrated track record in leadership and training. The PI should also have the appropriate scientific expertise with an active research portfolio and publication record. Training programs require a significant amount of administrative responsibility, and the PI needs to be able to strategize and manage the various elements of a program. The PI will also need to recruit faculty within their own department and coordinate efforts across different departments to ensure an interdisciplinary experience. Faculty should include experts from genomic medicine and genomic science. Training plan should clearly state the program objectives, design, and overall directions. Plan should include a description of courses, lab rotations, and research experiences that are related to genomic medicine. The genomic medicine T32 program should be very different from other institutional training programs. This distinction needs to be made clear in the application. Courses should expose trainees to the basic concepts and develop a working knowledge in the scientific areas related to genomic medicine. Legal and social issues are also an integral part of genomic medicine, so this training in this area related to genomic medicine is considered essential. The training should also include skills for writing manuscripts, fellowships, grant applications, and also having an experience for the process of developing research ideas, making plans, managing collaborations, 
managing a lab, and defining project success and managing research setbacks. Research and training experiences should also prepare students for a successful independent career. It should also prepare students with the ability to work in an interdisciplinary environment as an expert in genomic medicine. Program faculty and mentors should provide guidance on career development, such as how to match skills for a career in genomic medicine. There should also be activities for trainees to interact with other students and faculty in relevant areas of genomic medicine. These programs should provide a forum for students to interact and share ideas to solve important scientific problems. Training selection is also an important consideration in developing a program. What academic and research background is needed to pursue the proposed training, and how will the program accommodate differences in trainee skill sets and experience? Individual development plans will also help students achieve their career goals within the biomedical research workforce. These plans help with tailoring the training experience for trainees and can establish their expectations. I cannot stress enough that there needs to be a clear description of the uniqueness of a training program in genomic medicine. The training environment and institutional commitment for the program is incredibly important. Now about program evaluation. An evaluation plan of the T32 program should be included in your proposal. We would like this to be a rigorous plan that would assess the quality and effectiveness of the training, an opportunity to track students long term to determine endpoints, a plan to collect data on the program to make changes as necessary, and some of the metrics that should be considered would be a description of the program activities that the students will engage in, um, time of degree of completion, publications from trainees, fellowships and honors for the trainees, and also future job opportunities, kind of where they end up going. We the opportunities to collect this data would come from individual interviews with trainees where you would help identify weaknesses, areas of improvement of the program, to improve trainee mentor matching to make sure that they really are good matches and that mentors have the training and experience to be effective. And as always, making sure that the skill sets for the trainees are up to date. To the more administrative sides of the grant, the receipt dates for the program are as follow. For May, so there are three receipt dates a year. May 25th, this is for new applications, and these include revised <laughs> applications. Oh. For January 25th and September 25th, this is only for renewal applications or type twos. We recommend that you use the SF424 research and related application package. All of these links can be found in the parent notice. On the budgets, um, allowable costs include requesting tuition, fees, health insurance, and stipend for the trainees, and up to $2,000 a year for the annual trainee network meeting in D.C. These will be starting in 2016. These will be an opportunity for trainees and the principal investigators to come to Washington for a two-day workshop for trainees to be able to interact with other faculty, other students, present their research, and also receive training on things such as resume writing, how to find a fellowship, um, and more of that career development. Point to the program announcement for the Genomic Medicine T32. Point, I'd like to open the floor up for any applicant questions. Um, I am here joined by myself and Betty Graham, Tina Gatlin, Bianca Patel, and Susan Toy from our grants management. 